What's up, y'all? I'm Andy Story with Poster Grind, your neighborhood art director that designs movie posters for a living. Today's video, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to do a cyberpunk style pixel stretch where we take an image or a profile picture and put a stretching effect uh, to it. You're going to learn a bunch of stuff in this tutorial. We're talking about how to use how to use textures, how to use blending modes, how to create the half tone, and of course, how to create the pixel stretch, which is probably the most important thing. The other cool thing is that you can apply these techniques to numerous things, whether you're designing movie posters, graphic design projects, you name it. You're going to learn something in here that you can definitely translate to your artwork. <laughs> All right, y'all, get that Photoshop fired up because we are going on a major roller coaster ride, creating some amazing artwork today, some cool techniques. And what you're gonna need for this tutorial is a little bit of photography, a little bit of textures. Obviously, go out and try and find a profile picture. I have this really cool looking lady with tattoos, awesome profile. And the idea is to have her with a face stretch into herself again. <laughs> and that sounds really weird, but it's gonna look cool. If you've seen the thumbnail for this, that's exactly what we're gonna do. The other thing we're gonna need is a few textures for the end. I picked these up over at texturelab.org. The guy that runs that also does tutorials and has amazing free textures that you can play around with. So go check those out. Uh, I'll put the description of every texture that I've used in this tutorial down below. Also, the photo that I'm using is from envato.com. I have a subscription there they do license their photography and other graphic design assets so if you are working commercially it is a good idea to check them out and plus if you do use them we get a small commission for referring them business so appreciate that the first thing we got to do is mask her out and it doesn't have to be a really good mask because this is going to be a very graphic execution and the uh and it's not like we're gonna keep it realistic. If this was gonna be a realistic thing, we would spend more time on masking. But for this situation, all you gotta do is click on that layer, go up to select, then go to subject, and then it's going to do all the work for us. Now go down here to, the to your right and hit the mask icon, and now we have our image masked out. And if you zoom in, you can see it's not really that great, but it doesn't really matter. Just trust me on that. We're going to need to make another copy. So on that layer, hit Command J and then hit Command T. And now we're going to flip it horizontally. So go down to flip horizontal. And now we have a flipped image, which is perfect. Now we're going to drop that image over here. And then the other image, the bottom layer, we're going to drop over here, something like that. And now we can go ahead and hide that right image. And we're going to work with this left image. So what we got to do is make a copy so hit command j and we have a copy and then we're just going to rasterize that layer so right click and then go to rasterize layer like so and then we can just go ahead and hide that bottom layer and now we have this rasterize layer and we might as well apply the mask just to get rid of the mask just because it's less confusing if we do so so right click one more time over the mask, go to apply layer mask and now we have this image that is ready to go go ahead and hit v and then keep your finger down on the shift key and we're just gonna drag it to the right. And then from here, we're going to make sure we're still on that same layer, hit the option key, and then hit the right arrow, I mean the left arrow. It's gonna push the image, or it's gonna make a copy and push the image to the left one pixel. And now with that same layer, now hit shift option and the left arrow key and it's gonna drag that image backwards. And we just need to do this a few times. Now that we have all of these copies created, we can go ahead and merge them. So make sure that they are all selected, except for that top, that the last one, you can just go ahead and leave the last one there. And now that they're all selected, right click and then merge layers. And now those are merged into one layer. And from here, make sure your rulers are out by hitting Command R. That will toggle your rulers on and off. And then from the left, go ahead and drag a, uh, a vertical line all the way over to this part of your image. 
And we're going to use that line to confirm that we have enough of these created. So we need uh, we need enough bottom layers of these duplicated images in order for this to work. It's hard to explain, but just trust me. So now go to your marquee tool. You can either go to the left over here or just hit M on your keyboard and drag that marquee tool from the top to the bottom. And now you see the marching ants. They are settling on top of that line that we just made, the ruler line, and then let it go. And now making sure that we're still on that same layer, hit Command J. And now we have all these pixels copied within the marquee tool selection. And from here we can hide those layers and you can hit Command H to hide that blue vertical line. And you can barely see what we just created. But from here, make sure you're still selected on that layer. Hit Command T and now it is selected. And make sure your finger is on that Option button because now we're gonna drag these pixels from left to right. And now we have our awesome effect. You can just drag it out to where you need it. I'm just gonna let it go there. Hit Return or Enter on your keyboard. And now you can see exactly what had happened. So drag this rasterized, rasterized layer on top. And now you see all of these colors have been stretched perfectly. And it looks really cool. And this here could be a completely different art piece in its own. In fact, I did a tutorial on this and turned it into a colored bitmap, another graphic way or another graphic treatment that would look great on a movie poster or graphic design project. For now, we just need to create this bridge, this stretched bridge between both of our images. So we have the right image and we have the left image. But what I wanna do is drag this other image up top and then move it where we want it. So right there, I just wanna make sure that there's space between our canvas, you know, a, a little bit of room here so that it's not cropped off completely. And I just kinda of wanna mirror that over here on the right. And now we have our two images ready to go. And from here, I'm just gonna turn these, actually, let's go ahead and hit Command J and drag a safety image down below just in case we have to create the same exact thing that's already masked out. It's just a good practice or a good habit to get into and we're just going to let that or turn that layer off and then these images up here we're going to go ahead and convert to smart objects and then from there we're going to use a little bit of the liquify filter and you'll see what i'm talking about but for now right click on each one and convert to smart object and now let's go ahead and stretch the faces using the liquify tool but let's get rid of that bottom layer so it's less confusing so you can kind of see once I bring these back. So with now with this left image, go to filter and from filter, we're just gonna to go to liquify and from liquify, we're just gonna stretch the face out and make it look really funny. So this kind of doesn't have to be perfect because we are gonna be doing a lot of other things graphically to this image. So just go ahead and stretch it out it's just going to help with the effect a tad and make it look a little realistic like there's suction coming from each of these portraits okay that should be good and then i'm going to do the same exact thing to the right image going up to filter and then making sure i'm going down to the liquify and then i'm just going to drag the face out on this one as well all right, that should be good. It looks really crazy, but uh, it's gonna look better once we get done with what we gotta get done. Now we need to work with our pixelated form, our pixelated stretches. And to do that, I really want to only have the where the skin goes to the other part of the skin. And to do that, we can just go ahead and mask it out. So get the marquee tool out and by hitting M, and then we're just gonna, mask from here. So we have this selection with the marquee tool, hit the mask icon. And if it does that, it just we just need to invert it. So go ahead and make sure you're selected on your mask and hit command I, and that'll invert it. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the bottom with your marquee tool, hit M, and we're just going to have this portion masked out. So now I'm just going to hit command delete well, make sure your secondary color over here is on black. And now I'm gonna hit Command Delete and mask that out. And then I can go ahead and hit Command D to release the selection and then hit L with the lasso tool. I'm just gonna get this out of the way. 
So we have a selection. I'm going to hit Command Delete again, and that's out of the way. And then over here, same thing with the lasso tool, selection, Command Delete, and then Command D to release the selection. And from here, I'm going to make one copy in case I need to do anything, drag that copy down below, turn it off, go back to this one. And then now I'm just going to rasterize this layer. And then here I'm just going to convert it to a smart object. And then I'm going to bring this layer up top like so. And then from here, all we got to do is kind of delicately mask out so that it looks a little bit more realistic. So just create a mask and then go ahead and get your pen tool. Make sure it's on black by hitting X and now B for brush. And now we can just brush away where we don't want this to show up. And I kind of want it to, you know, I just want to get, make sure we have that hair in there and you, you can increase your flow and decrease your flow, something like that. Same thing over here. And this part's gonna be subjective. I definitely want those earrings to show through and I don't want it to be a straight line. I want it to kind of follow the contour of the face. And now I'm just gonna paint back so that it bleeds into the skin. Now that that bleeds in or paints itself in pretty nicely, I can go ahead and make a copy of all three of the images that I'm working with. And I'm just going to hit Command J. Now, the reason I'm doing that is just in case I have to go back to these layers for whatever reason. And now I'm going to turn each layer into its own smart object. So right click, convert to smart object, right click, convert to smart object. And one more time, right click and convert to smart object. And from here, I'm just going to turn all of these into its own smart object. And so make sure that they are all selected and now we can convert to a smart object. Now that that's a smart object, I'm gonna make one more copy because we're gonna to start to turn these into more of a graphic situation. Uh, and then that top layer, I'm just going to hide. And then this bottom layer, we're actually going to start to turn it into more of a graphic image by going up to filter, filter gallery, and from here, I'm going to go ahead and click on poster edges and you can kind of see that it's, and don't worry about this. That's not in our image right now. So that's just a little bit of sloppiness. We can just get rid of that if we had to, but I just really want you to see what the poster edges are doing. It kind of, you know, turns it into more of a illustrated vibe and it looks cool now, but this is just a little portion of it and you can play with the edge intensity and it does different stuff. I don't want to explain everything right now, but uh, what I'm using is, you can just kind of copy me. I have edge thickness set at four and then posterization. Uh, let's see, posterization I have at two. Edge, okay, so edge thickness four, edge intensity one and posterization set at two. Go ahead and hit okay. And now our image looks great. It's definitely getting graphic. And now let's go to this top image, make sure that that's selected. And this top image, we're just gonna go ahead and do something very similar, go back to filter. And then from filter, we're going to filter gallery and filter gallery, we're going to look for half tones which is in the sketch folder, hit half tones, and you can kind of play around with the size and contrast. So like that's way too big. Uh, I'll probably want something a little on the smaller side. So let's just keep it at one. Yeah, let's keep it at one. And then the contrast, keep it at 15. So size one, contrast 15, hit okay. Looking great. And from here, we can just go ahead and play with the blending mode that we get that bottom layer, the posterize of the bottom layer to, to sneak through. Otherwise, we would just have the halftone on its own, which in my opinion is not enough. We wanna have this look a little on the cooler side with both halftone and posterize. So yeah, let's, let's just go ahead and use the blending mode lighten. And I think that looks pretty good. I got a little carried away with the tutorial and I forgot to ask you to hit that like button. If you're enjoying this video and learning a ton, hit the like button now. I really appreciate it. It makes us feel like we're doing something right. All right, now that looks really, really cool, but I think we can start adding in a little bit of texture to this. And then from there, we'll probably add a gradient map on top. So go ahead and mess around with some of those textures. Uh, like I said below before, I'll have these exact textures so that you can follow along perfectly or the name of the textures over at Texture Labs. And so you can follow along perfectly. So I'm just going to kind of mess around with these. 
So this paper texture here, I just have it on lighten. And then this other texture here, I have it on multiply. And then from here, I'm just gonna see what happens if we, if we add a gradient map on top of everything. So go down to your adjustment layers, go to gradient map, which is on the towards the bottom. And then let's just, you know, do some experimentation and kind of see what works. Look for whatever, you know, kind of, whatever color scheme you're kind of going for. All right. so. I kind of sped through that. I just want to show you guys what I did. I added to the top of our art layer in our effects. I went ahead and added Texture Labs Paper 122L and uh, put this on darken at 57% opacity. And then I made a copy of that and I just inverted it. And then I put that layer on color burn to 61% opacity. And then I added this gradient map, which is uh, from the legacy legacy gradients and that was in the spectrum or it's titled spectrum and i believe that is in the spectrum down here the last folder and it's this one right there so if you wanted to use that you can and then on top of that layer i just added one more little thing of texture just to kind of blend everything together you could do that or not depends on what look you're going for and that is uh, texture lab paper 128 xl and you can even you know just depends on how strong you want it uh, whatever you're kind of going for. And then from here, I'm just going to title this. I'm going to add one more layer, hit T for type, and then just call this uh, Cyber Stretch. 